Welcome back. Today we're going to put a new spin on an old fly. We're going to tie a weightless Miss October. Um, this one, uh, I'll explain more more about the applications or the uses for this one as I go through the video, but it was actually my cousin Troy that gave me the idea for this one um, for, for night fishing a, a while back. So I decided I'd put one together and then I went back and forth on how I would how I would take the weight out of it, if I would keep the original construct, or if I would go into uh, something new. So I kind of did like a little hybrid in between the two, but it seemed to have worked out pretty good. Um, but we'll go ahead and just get started on this one. Um, nothing really new as far as the size goes. If you want to, you can scale it up or down. Um, I kept this one the same length. So we're just gonna take some black ice wing fiber here once we get our thread on the hook. This is an MFC 7050 size 2 for our back hook. We'll just get that tied on there. And then, like I was saying, this is just black ice wing fiber. This is going to be the flash portion of our tail. Just want to take this, double it up, and go right over the top here. and we'll get that locked into place. Now I'll just take one wrap right behind us just to kind of bring everything together. One more wrap, pull down tight and call that good. Come up from the first ring on the um, jaw adjustment here on the Renzetti. Get it pretty close. Yeah, that's, that's right about where we want it. I don't take and cut them perfectly straight. So I just get a just get a measurement with my fingers, uh, pull back just slightly, and then run the scissors right through it. So then we're going to go with the dubbing brush version today. We're not going to be Palmer in any hackle, and we're just going to do this in a straight black, just like the original. So we'll go ahead. Get that tied in, get it good and secure, and then one wrap. Kind of just fluff all of those feathers out a little bit. Grab a second wrap. Fluff them out again. Peel everything to the back, and then we're just going to take this and go one to get everything secure. Make sure you have a nice clean point to cut this. Oh, get back here. Make sure you got a nice clean point to cut this from. And then we'll just go ahead and snip that off with some old scissors, set that off to the side. Just kind of peeling all this back. Catch that wire underneath and I just bend it forward with my thumbnail. That way I'm not gonna have a burr catching thread or anything like that and ripping it up. And then I just tie right over top of that wire. Bring this back right to the point of your hook, just for consistency purposes. Get a couple of clean wraps right through there and then we'll set this down. So there you can see we have our back section. We've got the tail right there. Um, we're going to go into some UV puller for the body. I'm just dropping stuff left and right today. Go into some UV puller for the body. This is just a black UV. It has all of the blue and purple hues to it. Um, if, you want, if you want to cut that down, um, you can go with the straight black. It's not the UV. Um, I just like the way that this looks. That and I throw some purple lateral lines and the uh, laser dub head has the UV in it as well so I think it's a pretty good pair right throughout. Then we'll go ahead and 
and just start working this right to the front. Every third or fourth rep, I'm just gonna pull, anchor that down, pick out any fibers that I feel are trapped, get three to four, and then just work your way to the front. Give that a good anchor. Set that on, and then we're working our way right up. I think I want one more right there. Yeah, that'll do. And then we'll go ahead and just tie that off, get this out of our way, trim this, and then we'll go ahead and start prepping for our second wrap of marabou. Before we get to that, we're gonna put our lateral lines in underneath. Just clean everything up, give yourself a nice base to tie these in on, and there we go. We've got everything sitting how we want it to this point. Now we're gonna go with some, this is a whiting purple grizzly that I'm gonna use for a lateral line. I want it going slightly past my tail, so we're gonna go and lengthen that out just a little bit there. You can see the overall length that we're after for this, and then go ahead and trim this off. I want these lateral lines running nice and flat right down the side. If you have to, grab a little bit of the actual um, fibers before you go tighten down on this, and it should keep it from rolling on you. There you go, you can see. We've got that running nice and flat right down the side. There's a little curve to it. Um, I'm not gonna get too worked up about that. A little bit of a wave right there, but I'm um, down toward the end of the pack. I tied an absolute mess of these when I first got the uh, purple hackle from Whiting. I tied a pile of them. It was somewhere along the lines of like five dozen, I think. There was a mess of them. But anyhow, like I was talking about at the beginning of this video, as I, as I get ready to prep this second one, um, I'm just going to pair this up, but like I was talking about at the beginning of the video, um, Troy was, Troy and I were talking uh, last year coming into summer, so probably about this time last year, and uh, talking about a lot of night fishing and everything, and you know, I was telling him how we went to one of Kelly's seminars and he was saying how he, he fishes the heifer groomer, or the fat head a lot at night, and um, just because of the weightless properties and everything. He'll go to that before he will a mouse typically because it'll be subsurface. And if you listen to him talk about mousing and everything, um, unless your mouse is submerged, they're typically just gonna blow it out of the water and your hookup rate's really not that good. So he started going with like a black heifer groomer or something like that. And he said his hookup rate helped a ton or went up a ton, I should say. So Troy and I were talking about that, and he's like, we ought to take, take the weight out of the October and give that a shot. So um, wound up doing that, and it turned out pretty good. Um, for the night thing and everything, you know I mean? Because if you go with the regular October, um, it's got some pretty heavy eyes in it, and because there's no deer hair or anything like that, it can get down on you pretty quick, especially using a sinking line like I typically do and um, it'll wind up getting hung up a decent amount because at night you're fishing the shallow runs and everything where the where the fish are hunting and um, that heavy one will, will wind up pulling a bunch of rocks up for you and not doing too well so uh, wound up going with this and and it is it has responded very well so I don't know if I'll start putting these in the production or not, it'll probably just be um, by request only. I don't know, depending on how uh, how I'm able to keep up with everything else. I may wind up tying a couple of these, just keep them on stock. 
but uh, for the most part I just tie these um, as folks ask for them so let me see here so anyhow two wraps right on top of this taking that right up to the eye of our hook and then I want to go one wrap right behind that eye get a second to really secure it pull it down into the eye and then we'll go ahead and trim this off another good place for this like if you get a, a really good overcast day to where those fish are really feeding on the in those shallow runs um, once again your 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 weighted or your normal October is going to wind up getting down into the rocks pretty quick or into the bottom pretty quick and you really have to move it faster than sometimes you would want to to keep it from getting snagged so this is another good application if you're hunting some really shallow water um, the weightless October is the way to go if you still want all of that motion that the uh, that the marabou gives you so there we go there is our back hook we're gonna take this now and I'm gonna grab a black marker there go the dogs neighborhood kids but this is the first nice day we have had and I don't know how long it's absolutely beautiful outside the neighborhood kids are out there riding the motorcycles and dirt bikes and all that stuff around and the girls just don't think that they should be doing that as you can hear so there we go there's the back half with our purple lateral lines going down the sides and everything everything looks good everything's how we want it we're gonna take our articulation wire and I'm going to grab two beads here Knox hey oh boy always something always something they do not appreciate the dirt bikes in their yard anyhow like I was saying before the old black dog decided to voice her opinion we're just gonna grab these two beads I just have some blue uh, beads right there I'm gonna set that off to the side and go ahead with our front hook which is a 7008 size 4 it's a 4x long hook a little bit longer than the two if you want to you can go with the 3x long size one um, I typically go with the down eye on this so that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that but we'll just go ahead and get a quick thread base down here take that right back to the barb of the hook we'll advance a few forward and then we'll connect our back hook get our wires running parallel as always set that right on the side we'll capture that make sure that it's running parallel the connection can be shortened just a touch and that looks pretty good I'm gonna get a couple of wraps right around there and then really tighten down on that and then I want to just take that underneath go right over the top and run this forward so there we go we'll get that in a material clip get that off out of our way and then double over our wires one on that side one on this side
and then we'll just bring that right back to where we're going to start. We're going to tie our brush back in here. I'm going to find a spot. There's a couple of really short pieces right here. I'm just going to work through this. This is this is an old brush. I've since gotten a little bit better at making these. They're definitely a little bit cleaner, so there's some spots on this that just aren't the best. It winds up leaving some bumps and everything throughout the fly. Like I said, I've kind of refined that process a little bit over the last year or so, and it really cleaned the fly up a lot. So I'm just gonna toss that old stuff out that I have. It's not gonna make the grade. So once again, we're just doing two wraps here. We've got one, we're gonna grab a second right through there pull that up, just kind of fluff that stuff out a little bit, and then separate the stuff underneath from the stuff that we already have tied on, get that nice and clean going to the back, and then we'll go ahead and take that out and trim that off. Once again, we're just preening all of this stuff back, and we're we're going to take our thread back over the material until we get to the point of that hook and then set that into place that's going to lock us where we want it. Just getting a couple wraps in there to clean everything up once again and we're back to our polar chenille. Get that tied in and then we're going to take this, usually we have the eyes right there to give us a, a reference of where we're going, but we're going to take this right to our tie-off point. We're going to have about a quarter of an inch right there, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch that's going to be a laser dub head. So then we just take this, get our wraps in through here three to four anchor and pick all of that stuff up. A couple of wraps, pick it out, anchor. A couple of wraps, almost to the front here. We'll probably get two more in there. One, two, and that looks pretty good. So we're just going to take that and go right over the top. Trim that off, get that out of our way, and then I'm going to make a couple of wraps right over the top of that just to move that back slightly and to clean everything up. And we're getting down to the home stretch on this one. Back to your marabou brush. And if you don't have the brushes, you can just palmer some marabou in here and uh, it'll give you the same effect. You'll want to pick some heavier marabou to do this, um, not on the stem. You'll want like some really um, webby marabou. Uh, but make sure that your stem isn't really thick or it'll wind up uh, splitting on you and you could wind up losing the fly. Find something that's nice and webby because you're going to need something to substitute the bulk that this brush gives you. So be really selective when you're going through and if you're Palmer and Marabou. Once again, separate all of this stuff. One, two, get that locked in there, and then we'll trim that off, get rid of a couple of these, and then same thing as before, you're just preening all of this stuff back. Making a couple of wraps right over your marabou. 
getting everything cleaned up and got a little bit of a bump there but that's all right by the time we get the eyes and everything on there you won't even notice it before we go on to the head of this pattern we're going to put our rubber legs in this is three this is a set of three the fly enhancer uh, black and purple just kind of matches the overall theme of the rest of the fly there get your figure eight on the top of that one two pull straight down it'll work its way into those rubber legs and uh, really lock those into place so now we'll peel everything back here get a straw right over the top so there's no interference with the remainder of the fly and then we're going to start with our throat that we put on these this is just some red sanyos right underneath, right behind, or right in front of where we tied in our rubber legs. Just throw that V in there real quick and then secure it into place and then we'll go ahead and make a quick cut right like so. Work your thread to the back and then I'm just going to pick out, I don't know, I think five pieces is what I'll use on this. I'm just going to take five, five sections of this black laser dub out, set them off to the side, and then I'm going to find the heaviest one that I have, and I'm just going to work this in my fingers. Just evening everything out, making sure that I have a nice secure center bundle to tie in. And then this one's going to go right on the top, right in front of those rubber legs. One, two, pull down. Same thing on the bottom. That one looks pretty good. One, two, And third. Get that right in front of your red. Right in front of that throat. Two, really tighten that up. And a couple of fibers wanting to go through there. Now we're going to go back to the top. You can see that I'm going to leave just a little bit of space right there um, in front of this eye. What I typically do is I do three on the top and two on the bottom. Um, it just kind of fills it out a little bit better in my opinion, so that's the way I typically try to go on these. I leave a little bit of space in between the two stacks of laser dub though. That's where my eyes are going to get put in. And if you leave that little bit of space, it gives you a nice foundation for your glue and for your eyes. And it really makes it, uh, really makes it easier for those eyes to stay locked in. So one more time on the bottom. We're going to throw this in, just cup that set it right in front of the eye of the hook move your materials out of the way two wraps pull down tight and it's locked in and then i have just a small section here of black senos that i'm just going to tie right in the very front There we go. Go ahead and whip finish this. And 
and before I put the eye on, I'm gonna color up the thread wraps in the front. So we'll just go and touch this stuff up right in the very front. Everything's pretty clear. We've got a nice platform on both sides to put our eyes in. So now I'm just gonna go with some seven millimeter fish skull eyes. These are red or fire, however you refer to them. I typically just call them red. Set that off to the side, find your Loctite. This is gel. And then I'm gonna put a drop right in the center there and then right in the center over here. Grab my eyes, get it facing the direction that I want. Same thing on this side. Set this eye in right where I want it. I'll move that back just slightly. There you can see those sitting in. I'm gonna look at it from the front, make sure that I have them lined up, that they're nice and even, they're not coming too too far into the front to where they're going over the, the eye of the hook. I'll just hold them in, lock them into place, and that glue is going in between the two, or in between um, these two stacks of laser dub that you have right here, and it's meeting in the middle and it's just locking that together. Those eyes will stay on there for as long as this fly. Um, stays off the rocks. So, before I do any other trimming on those legs or anything, I just want to take, give this thing a quick haircut right over the top. Just kind of angle that stuff back, flip it upside down, and then I'm going to go right from the front, same thing. Just give that a quick trim and then just kind of peel all of that stuff back. It sits right how we want it to. It's got a nice clean head. Um, very low profile on the head, so it cuts through the water really nice. And um, there's no weight to this thing. So like I was saying before, you can, you can really fish this in some shallow water. Give those legs a quick trim, and there we've got a finished weightless Miss October. And just kind of peel some of that stuff around here. Get out of there. There we go. Get a good look at this thing before we shut the camera off. Got our lateral lines coming back. That backside's wanting to twisting that material clip a little bit. That's all right. That's all right. We'll give this thing a quick spin. For the camera there. And there you have the weightless October. All the benefits of the standard weighted October with the lead eyes. There we go. The only difference being that you can fish this in a lot more um, shallow water. There's times even like it, I don't I don't solely fish this at night. There will be times um, you know to where I just feel a weightless fly will uh, will move a little bit easier, and this this really does. Um, it moves a little bit easier. It's, it's kind of limited. You can't jig it as well as you can the standard October. But if I have a section of water that I just want to rip a fly through that I really want to move fast, um, this will be what I go to. Um, th this thing cuts through the water so quick and it still has that pulsating effect from all the, the from the marabou brush. So uh, it's, it's just something that's a, a little bit more, it can do some things that the standard October doesn't, I guess is what I should be saying there. But 
that's all I have for that one. If you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. But thanks as always for watching, and we'll catch you on the next fly.